Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro 10 and specifically about the Timeline Index. The Timeline Index. And the Timeline Index in Final Cut Pro 10 is unique in all nonlinear editing software. Nobody's got anything like it. Nobody has anything like it. In fact, whenever I demo this in front of uh, you know groups, editors, uh, user groups, you can literally see people's mouth hang, fall open and go, wow, I didn't know that was even there. I've seen people who've been using Final Cut 10 for quite a while and didn't even know it existed. It's, it's, it's kind of hidden, but it's really powerful. It's great, and it's more than just a search feature, as you'll see in a moment. Let's check it out. All right, let's take a look. Here I have a timeline, and I have lots of different stuff in it. I have titles, I've got dissolves, I've got music, I've got connected storylines. And a lot of times I want to look for something specific. I want to find a transition, a title. Maybe I want to locate an iPhone clip or a GoPro clip. Well, I can't tell just by looking at the timeline uh, what those things are. No, you'd have to get information, go to the inspector, and do all this kind of stuff. And right? this is where the timeline index comes in. It's hugely... Uh, utilitarian for locating stuff that you wouldn't otherwise do by just looking at the timeline. So huh. let's let's go ahead and open the timeline index by clicking this button, or we can press Command Shift Two. It opens this little panel. Let's just start with transitions. Um, I have a lot of transitions, but I don't know what they are. But let's say I want to know where all my dissolves are. I just type in the first few letters of, of dissolve, and right away. It lists every single dissolve that's in the project. It lists them all for the whole project. For the entire project. And then when you select it, here in the index, it selects it in the actual timeline. It jumps the playhead to it and it selects it. Right. And then you press the space bar and you can see, well, it is in fact a dissolve. So what's really great is you can jump to exactly the transition you want to. And then since it's selected, you can quickly replace it too. So all I need to do because it's selected is go into the transition browser locate a different transition, let's say this circle white, and simply double click. And just like that, the transition is replaced. One thing. Wow, and I noticed the, the list of cross dissolves decreased by one because you replaced that, it doesn't exist anymore. Which means, it should tell you, you should be able to go in here and type in circle. And there it is. And show you your circle wipes. Uh, very cool. Isn't that great? <laughs> So, I'm surprised you have two circle wipes in this show. Uh, you can't have enough circle wipes. You just, you just can't. Um, let's look at, um, trend, let's say titles. Titles is a biggie, right? Okay, you want to sure. know where the titles are? Um, I'm going to go ahead and click this button down here, titles, and I'm going to make sure to clear out the search field. Yeah, okay? that can get you. Yeah. So if I click on these different titles. So it's a list of every title in your project. That's right. So this is the first one. It's a little lower third that comes in. I have this one at the end, which is my credits. But you can see any title that you have is immediately presented there. Selected and the playhead jumps to it. Right. Nice. Now, if, if I play this a little bit, I can see that, you know, client sitting behind me, uh, what, what do you get? What's with the blue? I'm, I have red in all my logos. Yeah, stuff. You, I'm all red and black. I'm all red and black. So, uh -huh. so what I'm going to do is quickly replace it again because it's already selected. All I need to do is go over to, in this case, I'm going to the theme browser because this is where it came from. And it came from the news category. Uh, I'm just going to go down here, and there, there it is. Just slide in. Just double click. Just like that, it replaces the title, just and it keeps the name. Keeps and all everything. the name, everything. So I'll double click, and you're and you've got a new background. Got a new background. Isn't Sweet. that fantastic? That's excellent. All right. Again, no other NLE does this. Um, let's look at um, keywords, which is a big part of looking for things and finding them without spending a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is click this tags button. Okay? And I'm going to click this little key, which brings up the keywords. So every keyword in your timeline, every clip that has been keyword will appear here. Okay, so when you originally imported your media and you reviewed it and you tagged it all with keywords, all those keywords appear in the timeline index. That's right, if they were tagged ahead of time before you put them in the timeline. Ah, okay. This is where it bec becomes really useful. I want to locate all clips of mountain, of the mountain, like McDowell okay. Mountain where we shot. Uh, client, client wants to see all the mountain stuff. So just like that, I, ha I can quickly jump to any clip in the timeline that's been this tagged as a mountain. That's huge, especially if we're working on a really long project, like yeah. a big documentary, yeah. and you know there's a particular subject that somebody was talking about, and you want to see those clips. Instead of like looking all around, you can jump right to that. It's fantastic. And let's say you have some clips that you want to locate, like an iPhone or a GoPro, and you, you want to see it. Maybe you want to replace it with some higher quality footage or what have you. Maybe it's temporary, um, a proxy. Kind okay. of a, sh uh, a shot. So I'm going to go here and clear this out, and I'm just going to type in iPhone. 
Now, is this because you tagged the iPhone clips as being coming from right. an iPhone? Right. I, I tagged all of the clips okay. as iPhone clips. Okay. And then if I type in, let's say, GoPro, um, there's my GoPro clip. So I can uh. just I can jump right to that clip in the timeline, and I'll know exactly what it is. Wow. That's really powerful. Yeah. Fantastic. There's one last thing. Actually, two last things I want to show you. One is markers. Now, we all know what markers are. They're little places where you can um, denote things that you want to do in the timeline. I call them little post-it notes to yourself, uh -huh. post-production notes. So if I go ahead and click this um, show standard marker, I'll see a list of my standard markers. And th these are unnamed. And notice by clicking on them, the playhead will jump to jump all right the different to markers in the timeline. I can look at, uh, let's say, to-do markers, ones that I need to do something to. We can jump right to so the markers. So if you had markers. done a review with a client and you didn't make the changes then, but you just put notes in, like at this point, I need to put a different shot in there or something, you can jump right to those right. And, and basically like a checklist. That's it's right. basically is a built-in checklist. Yeah, and you can jump right to it. But that's not the best part, because I use chapter markers a lot of time when I export movie. Um, you can now look at chapter markers all in one list. So this is ah. the chapter markers that would export with your movie to show up in, let's say, a DVD menu or, or iTunes or what have you, or a yeah, QuickTime quick movie. movie. Uh -huh. The reason this is fantastic is even Final Cut Pro 7 didn't have, have this feature, had this feature where you could see all of your markers in one place. In one place. But here's the best part, you can edit them. You double click on any of them, it'll bring up the marker edit window. Ah, so you can just, without scrolling through the timeline and looking for them, right there right in the there. timeline index, edit each one. You can, you can rename it right there. Or you can click on the word itself, and if you get a misspelling, you can just, just fix type it. and fix it right nice. there. Nice. It's fantastic. Huge time saver. The last thing I want to show you is the roles feature in the Timeline Index. Now, this is a whole subject in and of itself, and yeah. we'll, we'll cover this in the future, but I want to talk about how I might use this in a client review edit Okay. Uh, really quickly. You could see that I have different ways of viewing my content. I could look at just the titles, and when I click on the titles here, uh, I'm looking at, th these are the titles, they're highlight, highlight they're highlight. all of them. If mm -hmm. I click dialogue, it'll show me just my dialogue clips, similarly my music clips or my effects clips. And this all assumes, of course, that you've properly tagged yes. your clips prior to adding them to the timeline. Yeah. And Final Cut, if you don't, Final Cut will guess the roles. And sometimes it guesses wrong. Though. Yeah, but, uh, but everything will get a tag of right, some sort. Let's assume that you tag you things properly. Okay. What I want you to see is how fast you could show your client a, what I call a textless master. They just want to see the edit, but they don't want to see the graphics and the titles. Okay. I just want to see the, the edit without all the clean. distraction of clean, clean. Uh -huh. So all you need to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the titles. You just turn off the check marks. Boom. Turn that off. Notice they go gray. Yep. And one click, you can turn off an entire section of your timeline. Uh, all the titles all, gone. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to or, select or them all. all your sound effects. All, or all your, your sound, music. Exactly. Very, very cool. So like you did, you want to turn off your fix, you just uncheck the box. Yep, and they see they turn gray there underneath the music in the timeline. Yep. There you go. So you may not be using roles for exporting things, but you may use them this way, where you quickly want to turn off an entire set of something. Beautiful, so very simple really, and easy. really powerful stuff. I find uh, I'm, use, I'm relying on this and using it more and more in almost all my edits. Excellent, Steve, thanks. Make sure you check out the Timeline Index, and thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.